Hello friends, this is Angel Soriano. Welcome to today's segment of Ask the Dog Man on Facebook Live, of course. This is the show where we offer solutions to your canine behavioral issues or training questions, and we do it live, obviously, and which, by the way, that means that some things can go wrong, they have in the past, and we will not disappoint you this time either. I'm sure something will go wrong. So, to that effect, whoever's out there, just give us a little heart, a little thumbs up, uh, you know, something uh, that lets us know that you're there. Otherwise, I'll continue talking, and you really don't want me to just talking, you know, talking endlessly, okay? So, um, by the way, uh, we do need your engagement, so, so post your questions. Uh, how this works is that you go to the comment section right on, on this post, and you put in your question, we get to answer it, then you know, hopefully it helps, and that, that's really our goal. So from that perspective, we need your engagement. Uh, do it as soon as you uh, think of a, a question and, and continue moving forward. So to that effect, I'll move on to our producer, Mr. James. Let us know that we have our first question, and if so, let's rock and roll. All right, we have our first question here from, okay. from uh, Pug Mom. Who rescued no, a what mom? A pug mom. Pug mom. Okay. Yes. Uh, rescued an eight-year eight-year-old female pug. Very sweet and gentle, laid-back dog. Uh, lets her daughter dress her and hold her like a baby. <laughs> okay. She sleeps with her daughter every night. But when visitors come home, uh, come to their home, uh, the dog barks, circles them. She tells them no, swats her behind, hmm. and then after about ten minutes, uh, the puppy settles down. Okay, so this is Pug Mama. <laughs> I love it. Okay, um, so a whole bunch of things go on in this particular question, but one of them, this dog acting this way with visitors coming to the house, who, you know, who knows, it could be overexcitement, it could be a little bit of fear, by the way. Uh, you know, how often do these people come? Are they normal visitors? If they are normal visitors, then it's just overexcitement. If it's a new visitor and they're doing that, it could be fear, right? A fear trigger event. Uh, either way, there's a couple of w ways to deal with this. Uh, in, in, instead of, you know, this whole patting in the behind, um, I don't know how big of a patting it is, but look, that kind of stuff just doesn't work as well as a verbal correction. Uh, you can do a verbal correction. You can make noise with one of those little plastic bottles. You can drop keys somewhere. It just startle the dog enough to interrupt the behavior. And when they do, where they learn is going to be through your phrase of them stopping. So if they're doing this to your friend, interrupt it immediately in one of those ways that I just mentioned instead of the patting. And uh, then, you know, be quick on the, on the reward after they shut up. You're going to interrupt it. They're going to shut up. They're probably going to be confused. They're going to look at you. And when that happens, you're going to reward that new behavior. And you may have to repeat it a couple of times, but soon this dog is going to be repeating the behavior that they're being rewarded for okay it's 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 easier than it sounds but try it, it it'll work for you okay i hope that that answers the question was there any deeper than that james no that was it on that one okay okay um what other questions do we have i don't have my monitor today guys so james has to read it all so don't put in any real long complicated <laughs> words okay all right so katie on facebook here uh, my dog was attacked by a neighbor's larger dog a few weeks ago. We took her to the dog park this past weekend, and she was aloof uh, and snapped at a dog. What can be done so she's not so nervous around other dogs now? Yep, yep. Okay, that's a really good question. That's really normal. Your dog is not abnormal, Katie. So a, a couple of things going on. Why it took place. You know, she got assaulted by a dog. Why that happened, I have no idea. But obviously, that was not a very nice dog that did that. But dogs learn through experiences, so just like we do, right? And what's interesting is they just don't comprehend it as well as we may. We may be able to tell that, yes, you were verbally assaulted by somebody, but that doesn't mean that every person in the planet is going to verbally assault you. So you can manage and you can deal with that a lot better than a dog can. So the dog basically is, is putting you know, dogs in, in, a, in, a, in a file, the discriminating file. If it's on four legs, you're probably no good. Um, so, you know, it's a normal reaction. Now, what do you do? And by the way, that's also, again, uh, fear triggered if the dog is acting this way. What do you do about it? You, you need to go through a process of reintroducing nice dogs, and you have to make sure these are nice dogs, right? You cannot uh, introduce them to another dog in the park hoping they're nice and see how they play. You know, go walk around, find your neighbors, find your buddies, your friends that you know have really nice dogs, and reintroduce your dogs to them one by one, and then have them play date, have them play. Then move on next day and introduce a new dog to them. 
do it step by step, but this is small step reintroductions and you should be fine. But you know, it's not abnormal for a dog to react this way after an assault of any sort. And it doesn't have to be a deadly assault. It doesn't have to be bloody. It is, it's just the, the fear that took place over that dog of being assaulted by a larger dog. So hope that helps if you have any more questions on this or if I didn't cover it well enough, if there was more to it, then type in your in a comment section and let us know. That was a great question, Katie. It happens to everybody, by the way. All right. So I, I'm sorry, babe, before we move on, I got, I got to go on a rant on, on dog parks, okay? This happened to you, Katie, because people bring the wrong dogs to the dog park, and it bothers me immensely. Um, you know, sometimes they bring diseased dogs to the, you know, to the park. They're sick, they got issues, and they pass it around. But more importantly, they, they'll bring behaviorally you know, challenge animals to a dog park because they need to play and these dogs are bullies and they cause this type of havoc. So, you know, I just wish I could get to everybody out there that's got one of those dogs and say, look, they're fixable, get them fixed, call us, call somebody, get them fixed before you go and alter another dog, just like Katie's dog right now, right? This dog is, is having some issues as a result of the bad experience that came from a dog like that. So anyway, that's my rant. Number two question. All right, Christy on Number Facebook three. asks uh, a fun question and wants to okay. know, how well do Huskies do in class? Hmm. Uh, I, I would imagine like a group class yeah, maybe. Yeah, that, group okay. class. Yeah. Um, you know, like any other animal, you, you just have to figure out what they respond to. Huskies are pretty independent little animals or big animals. So uh, they do fine. It, it, it's going to be about the relationship between you and your dog, okay? Not necessarily the class. As far as the class size and all this and how is he going to do with the other dogs, it depends on how well he does with dogs presently. Is he friendly to other dogs or not? If he's not friendly, then he probably needs to be evaluated and, and figure out why is it that he's not friendly. If he is friendly, then don't worry about it. They're, you know, we just have to figure out what he's going to respond to best when you do the training. And then again, it's a relationship between you and the dog, not necessarily the rest of the members in there. So like, I hope that helps. But you're dealing with an independent breed, by the way. All right. Rachel on Facebook asks, uh, they have a toy poodle pup cool. who loves to lick and is difficult to ignore him when he's on their lap. Any suggestions on how to deter this behavior? Mm, licking, huh? Uh, this is Rachel? Yes. Rachel. So I tell you, licking dogs bug the heck out of me, okay? Um, personally, my, my own dog, so they don't. Um, you know, as a result of that, and that's because I curve it from puppy on, they just don't do it. Now, uh, how do you do it any time in the, in, in the future once this is an adult dog and they're just doing it constantly? You, you have to make yourself, you know, taste not as good. Okay, that sounds funny. But uh, they like the salt that's on your skin, so they do that. Um, and if you happen to have reacted at one point or another when there were puppies uh, with the slicking, you thought it was cute, then all of a sudden now you have a behavioral condition where they're trying to please you, right? So how do you interrupt that today? You know, there's lots of products out there. If you make your, uh, you know, spray yourself with a little bit of bitter apple and make sure the dog gets a taste of it on your skin, not on the dog. Um, then they start saying, well, she's no longer tasting that good. If he likes to lick you in the face or whatever, since it's a small dog, then, you know, it's just, it, it's pretty safe product, by the way. You can get a little bit of that stuff and put it in the areas where he's going to go after it and then present your face to them, right? If you want to lick, here it is. Um, and, and let them get a taste of it. What's, what's going to happen is it's, it's, I tell you, bitter apple is nasty. And if, if you're going to use it, just put a little bit in your mouth and taste it. Okay. It's not going to kill you. It's, but it, you won't be able to brush it out of your mouth for three days. Um, it's, 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 it's a pretty strong deterrent and it's safe for the animal. So use that. Um, that will start the deterring factor, but it doesn't train them. It all does at that point is deters them from doing it your um, uh, training is going to have to start the minute they walk away or they back off. When they're backing off, I think it's when you need to do the bracing and the touching and the loving. When they're doing this, you know, you just basically get your hands off of it. They get this taste, they back off. As soon as they back off, you go back to the loving. So they'll understand that the loving comes when they're further away from you, not when they're licking you. So that's one, one way that you can go forward with this, with, with this particular process and, and see how that helps. So. Anyway, right. comment back again if you have more questions. Good deal. All right. James. I'm, my questions are piling up here. That's uh, cool. This is great. Exciting. So thank you. Eddie asks uh, a pretty simple question, kind of like the, with the Husky. Uh, how quick do German Shepherds learn in our behavior class? Behavior class. Okay. 
So I'll assume, uh, if, what's the name again? Uh, Eddie. Eddie. So Eddie, I, I assume that you've already had some sort of evaluation and, and you know that your dog belongs in a behavior class as opposed to like an obedience class. So I'll have to make that assumption since you, since you use that term. Um, so relative to how fast they learn, you know, German Shepherds are really sharp creatures. Okay, there's, there's a bunch of very sharp dogs out there uh, and I don't want to you know, seclude any one of them or isolate any one of them by just saying a few of them. But I, you know, German Shepherds is one of the top 10. Um, somebody was mentioning before poodle. Uh, poodles aren't the top ten. They're smart little dogs. They get it. Okay. So, but it really comes down to technique and what they're going to respond to best. So, if we're trying to deal with a behavior, we're going to have to deal with an interruption. We're going to have to deal with some sort of reward that immediately follows after such an interruption, meaning reward the right timing. German Shepherds get it. it it's they they're they're pretty smart little guys. It's, as a matter of fact, sometimes they outsmart the owner. So, no insult intended, but they. They do seem to try to outsmart their owners. And poodles do the same, by the way. But we, we have one of each at the house right now. My wife has a standard poodle. I have a German Shepherd. Uh, they will both attempt to outsmart us. And sometimes I swear they probably do. So anyway, I hope that helps, Eddie. But uh, don't, don't sweat it. it. They're terribly smart. All right. Producer? <clears throat> Next one from Miss Aguilar. Um, she took. She brought her dog to uh, one of our group classes, but unfortunately, okay. their schedule was was busy mm -hmm. for the homework. They now have a new puppy in their house, so they now have two dogs. Cool. Um, don't want to marry know her. if we would recommend boarding school to those who don't have time to train. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the answer is yes, of course. Uh, you know, boarding school doesn't fit every foot okay this is not like a shoe that fits every foot but it fits a lot of them okay um but one of the reasons it was created is because of that people just don't have the time and this is not negative it's just life you know you got work you got the kids you got school you got whatever you just don't you know if people have a life and because of your life and what you're doing every day then you know not everybody has the time to be able to to do the training or the rest of the things you know look at the list of other things around the house you're probably not doing so it's normal. So yes, um, either one or both. It depends on how young the puppy is. Uh, just know that learning takes place based on the ca capacity, the capability of that animal. So if you're looking at an eight-week-old puppy, don't expect that they're going to go to boarding school and come out with off-leash healing, right? It, it's just they don't get it. It's not there. So it's going to be age-appropriate training. If you're talking your other older dog, then expect some pretty good obedience. And as to how many days or how much time it's going to take it, that's all decided when we sit down and look at the dog and see where he's at. Since you already started, there may be a start, a good, a good structure there. Maybe not, I don't know. But um, let's, you know, suppose there is some sort of structure. Then we base it from there, take the dog from that point on, and do the rest of the work we need to do. So it, it, it's quite simple. And yes, it's, it's probably one of the best ideas. If you don't have time, that was what the program was put together for. It was for that reason. So phenomenal question. James. All right. Um, Are they still piling up? Yeah. I wish I had a monitor. That gets me all excited, all jazz. Trying to keep up here. <laughs> okay, so. Pardon, it's it's got to be a long question because he's, he's really, really reading it long. Pardon the silence. Okay, okay, so we have a German Shepherd that will constantly jump on us, knock our kids over. I'm afraid to let him in now. How can I get on top of the jumping? Got it. Okay. So uh, a whole bunch of different ways. I, I, the question leads me to believe that he's probably an outside dog now, since you're saying you're afraid to let him in. I got to read a lot of between the lines here. So uh, sometimes this is like a one-way conversation, which you know, uh, you know, my wife doesn't like either. So relative to how you how do you get this dog to stop jumping? A couple of things. One is the golden rule of thumb is we've got to do something about this so the dog becomes part of the pack again, being inside or with the rest of the people, etc. Because the longer he lives outside, the more he's going to want to jump because he spends less time with you. And every time you go out there, what is he going to do? He's going to jump and say hello and greet and all this. The best way to train something like this typically starts when they're puppies. You don't have that option, right? I mean, as a puppy, normally we should not allow them to do that. As cute as a eight-pound German Shepherd might be, you should not allow him to do that because one day he's going to be 80 pounds. But uh, if you're starting with a dog that is already there, there's a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. I mean, if he's jumping on you, one of the best ways, unless he, if he's super high energy, this may not work. But one of them is you can turn your back. Every time he does it, turn your back and walk away. Um, eventually, they start realizing that jumping is not a good idea. And when they don't jump, you praise again. You love, right? 
Um, and other, other ways of doing it is uh, to hold on to the paws when they jump up. Uh, just grab them, right, and hang on for, for, you know, four or five seconds. The dog's going to start dancing with you. You want it to jump, so grab those paws and hold them. Uh, after four or five seconds or so, you know, say you're off command, drop the paws. If he keeps them on the ground, you love on them, you say good off. If he jumps again, you grab them. Uh, these are training exercises. Certainly, you don't want your kids who are being knocked around doing this. So just uh, do this repeatedly. You'll you'll get on top of it. It's not hard. It's just time consuming. But uh, just know that it's it's not going to get any better unless the dog is incorporated incorporated back into the pack. Okay, and whatever that pack order might be, whatever that pack dynamic might be, it has to be part of it. Otherwise, he's just an outsider. Right. So hopefully that answers it. Give it a whirl. If you struggle, let us know. James. All right. So, Annie, uh, my German Shepherd Husky mix is one year okay. and pulls hard on the leash. Yeah. He does well if I have treats yeah. and walk him on a short lead next to my hip uh, when I have treats. But once I run out or don't give them to him, he keeps pulling. <laughs> Any advice? Yeah. He's already done two rounds of classes. Okay. Okay. So, yes, Annie, uh, one is if you've done the rounds with us, give us a call and we'll work with you, okay, and get this on top so you get it directly from us. But uh, one, Husky, imagine that, he pulls. Uh, part of the original equipment was for this guy to pull. Um, however, yes, you can get on top of that. Even Huskies should not be pulling on their lead. It's just, I'm just saying that uh, genetically, that's part of the equipment, right? So, uh how do you get on top of it? If you've taken a couple of classes to us, you probably have learned some of the tricks, but if they're not working, obviously. Well, one of the things that should work for you is assume that your dog wants to be with you. So one is don't use treats. He wants to be with you, right? Just put the treats away. Don't smell like a treat when you get up, when you get this dog out. Just go out with your dog in the lead. He's going to pull like he likes to pull. And then what I'd like you to do is just change direction. And if you're going south, all of a sudden turn around, go north, say your heel come in and start walking north. Assuming that your dog wants to be with you, and he does, he's going to catch up to you, and he may just pass you, right? Which, since he likes to pull, he's probably going to pass you. The minute he passes you, turn around and do another 180, which is now if you are heading south, you know, now you're going to head north, okay? Uh, do this again. What's going to happen is dog's going to turn around. He wants to be with you. He's going to catch up. Most likely pass you. Uh, as soon as he passes you, turn around and go north. You understand this? Continue to do this. You'll probably do this five, six times. You're going to confuse the daylights out of him. At that point, he's probably going to slow down and figure out why it is that you cannot make up your mind, right? So if you continue to go left and right and he cannot figure it out, he's going to slow down and watch what it is that you're doing. That is one way of doing it. Uh, treats, as you said earlier, work exactly as you mentioned. It's, it's working exactly as designed. And that is as long as you have food, he's going to do what you want him to do. He's going to be you know, eating it right off the spot that you have him on, either your leg on one side or the other. The minute you re re remove it, there's there's nothing to work for. So you're going to have to retrain this dog to work for your praise, your love, your attention, not necessarily food. Okay, um, doing those little 180 exercises works really well, even with the toughest cases. Okay, um, there is equipment you can put on the dog too, but I don't want to recommend that over a, a Facebook channel unless we see the dog and we try to figure out what it is that he needs. But there's typically equipment that may work. Like I said, the trick I just mentioned may work even better. So. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, contact us again. We'll be here in two weeks again. So if we struggle, come, you know, just put another comment on there. Uh, if um, and uh, if we've answered, that's great. As a matter of fact, if, if this works for you in two weeks, come on back and comment. And let us know how that works. So, cool. Next, James. All right, Elizabeth mm -hmm. uh, has a five-month-old puppy, a Mastiff Australian Shepherd mix, who loves to chase her cat. Um, mm -hmm. I know she's a puppy. Yeah. And just wants to play, hasn't been aggressive with the cat, but is there anything she can do to help with this? Yeah, those are tough. Um, Aussies, oh my gosh, and how old is it? Uh, five months. Five months, okay. Well, it's a, it's a good time to start interrupt, interrupting this stuff. Aussies are really high energy animals, and as a result, they have high prey drive. Uh, that high prey drive means that they're going to start chasing things that act like prey. I haven't seen a cat on the face of the planet yet that does not act like prey, right? They, they're suspicious, they sneak around, and at the you know, slightest movement, they take off running. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun. You know, if you were a dog, you would love that kind of movement. So um, that is pretty normal. And if you have a high-energy dog, it's going to happen. Now, as far as interruptions, I tell you, if at five months, it's a young enough age. I think you need to get on the side of the cat and start, you know, basically uh, uh, 
helping them out basically. I, typically cats take care of themselves and you know they may slaughter two or three and scare the daylights out of the dog and the dogs back up and they never do it again. I'm not sure if your cat is doing that. It could be a really nice cat and doesn't want to defend itself and it's just running or it could be a real you know, uh, fearful cat and not wanting any part of this dog. Whatever the reason, you know, why don't you become that defender of the cat? And something you could do is fill yourself up a little tiny spray bottle with a little bit of water in it. And every time the dog tries to do this, then make sure you spray this. Make sure it's in a mist and be near the cat. You know, the dog tries to do this or starts uh, stalking is what they'll do, right? As soon as you see this dog stalking, then go ahead and spray them. Use an interruption word, right? Stop, leave it, whatever. And as soon as the dog does, and they will, by the way, because they're going to be sprayed, they're going to be looking at you like, what in the world, why did you do this? As soon as they react to that, then start your praising mechanism and let it be verbal, right? And that, you know, by the way, you, you need to use really bad English, okay? So if your command was stop, then you're going to say, good, stop. If the command was leave it, you're going to say, good, leave it. Praise the command you just used so the dog has heard it two times, three times, four times. They start getting used to it. But you do those interruptions. Now, now the dog starts understanding a few lessons. One is there's an alpha order, and obviously this cat is your favorite, okay, um, because you're defending it. And two, they start understanding the rules of the pond because you're defending it and you're interrupting, and they start understanding that little dilemma. Uh, the last item on that list, of course, is get some training behind that dog, right? Obedience training will go a long way in the dog understanding your language, your, your message, your, you know, what the rules of your pond are, right? So get that behind you, you'll be, you'll be shocked. Anyway, try that for now. Let us know in a future segment or email us or whatever. Just let us know how that went. All right. One more. All right. Actually, a few more. Lori has a six-month-old Anatolian Shepherd Ooh. who is a great dog, but when she comes home, uh, yeah, when she when she comes home, she finds that he has eaten the hot tub cover, oh. eaten hoses, turned on the outside faucet, <laughs> keeps getting in trouble oh, despite having all the toys and bones outside. What can she do? Okay, so the dog's outside yeah. when all this is going on. Yes. Okay. So it sounds like some level of anxiety going on because you're gone, okay? Um, either that or the dog needs to you know, be busier. But uh, a few things that I would recommend, by the way, I love Anatoly Shepherds, they're phenomenal, uh, monsters as far as size. Um, so a couple of things that I would suggest. Uh, number one on the list should be increase this dog's exercise. Okay, whatever you're doing, if you think you're doing, you know, 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, I, let's assume that you go running. You're a jogger and you jog with this dog for a whole hour. And you're going to say, well, how much more do I need to do? Increase it by 10 minutes, by 15 minutes. Whatever it is this dog is getting, it's not enough, right? So increase the exercise by 10 minutes or, you know, let's say 10%. Um, then go up again another 10% after that. Keep Continue going up. This dog needs more exercise in their life, more, you know, stimulation from that perspective. Um, the next item on here is you need to mentally stimulate them. Um, we're about to put a video up on mental stimulation in dogs here in the next one or two weeks. Look for it. It's going to be on our YouTube channel. Go look for it. You need to mentally stimulate them. There's all sorts of games you can play with them that will mentally stimulate them and help out. But as to what do you do right now with this dog that is chewing stuff up? Well, you know, what if you need to protect your house? So. Um, I would start with what's called busy toys, and I'm not sure if you have any. I, you mentioned toys, and I, I believe you have a bunch of toys. Busy toys are feeding toys. These are toys that are specifically designed to drop a treat or have a treat or stuff it with treats, something that will feed the dog while you're gone. Uh, one of the favorite ones that I've used over the years is Kong. They've been around even before people were making busy toys. Okay, So you can get yourself a Kong, stick you know, a, a whole bunch of... Uh, uh, spread, uh, dog spread in the center of it, and let them have it, and let them get busy with that. Now, they're going to clean it up pretty quickly, so you're probably better off freezing this thing and then give it into them. Just know you're going to have two to three hours worth of work. The exercise alone is what's going to get you through this a lot better than uh, busy toys, but that's one. The other is, on the things he's chewing, I would go out of my way to do a cleanup of the backyard of what it is that he's going after, and uh, do set him up. And what I mean by that is, leave the one... Uh, let's say hose that he's already chewed up, leave it out there, get, some, get yourself a little bit of bitter apple, I mentioned this earlier on a different case, get yourself some bitter apple, spray it right before you go, and let him get an experience of what happens when he chews on something that's got bitter apple on it. Uh, it's going to be kind of like a self-correction, if that makes sense, but uh, do it on something that he's already destroyed. For the most part, clean everything else out, 
and then do little setup sessions on things that he's destroyed over time. That is probably going to go a lot further. But what's really going to get your time, you know, uh, uh, it's going to move your head here is to get this guy stimulated. It sounds to me that he it feels to me from what I heard, uh, especially on uh, Anatolian, um, that he probably needs more stimulation, either exercise or his brain it just needs to be teased a lot more than what it is right now. So I hope that helps. Try it. Let us know. James? We have one more and then we'll sure. move on. Um, Sandra, Sandra has an eight-year-old male golden retriever who bullies her other dogs. Mm. Um, he okay. was fine with the other dogs when he came in as a uh, five-month-old pup. Okay. But then one of her older dogs got ill. Since then, he's been yeah. aggressive towards the older dog and now all the other dogs in the home. Yeah. Um, this has been going on for at least five years. Is there a way to correct this behavior? Wow. Okay. So um, it would have been a lot easier four years ago, <laughs> but that doesn't help. Uh, so yeah, typically I tell you, Sa Sandra, is it? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. So Sandra, typically behaviors in our world are typically fixable. It's how much time do we have to put into it or how much time do you have to put into it to be able to fix the behavior? That is the million dollar question. Okay. Now they're Typically, they're all doable one way or the other. It's just that it may take longer. As to this particular issue, uh, it sounds you're describing what typically you know looks to us like an alpha struggle between the pack, and it typically occurs at about that age when dogs come into the pack as a puppy. They progress themselves into it. If you end up with a dog in the pack that's either sick or gets old, just period. I mean, they just get older. Then some of the youngsters start figuring out that they may be able to take this on. Some of these youngsters are not good alpha leaders, okay? They're tough, they're hard, like this one seems to be. It's not a golden char characteristic to go beat up on other dogs. Uh, so something might be going on that the dog needs to be evaluated, but if you haven't done so, you know, get the dog behaviorally evaluated just to see what's going on. And there's a good chance that it's probably fixable, but we've got to figure out why he's triggering the way he is with the rest of the pack. And what is going on with the rest of the pack? It's probably, you know, easily 25 30 questions that i can come up with right now that will give us a better idea of what's going on with the pack that could be causing the problem and it may be a pack issue you don't have to do anything with a dog we just basically do things for the pack and the humans and the problem may go away but it's it sounds like a classical alpha struggle issue so call up and, and get it get it evaluated get it professionally looked at it, it, you'll know more afterwards so all right what are we doing james we're done, we're done he says oh yeah it's time so there you have it, folks. Thanks for tuning in today on Ask the Dog Man. This is great. I really appreciate you guys tuning in and, and bringing all these questions, playing along. This is fun for me. I don't know if you've gotten the jest, but I have a blast. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks on March 27th at 6.30. By the way, we have a little surprise. We have Kim Pimpin with uh, the Pet Food Pantry right here with us. It's going to be a blast. Um, I promise you it's going to be a cool show. She's a, she's a really super lady. She's got substance. You have to tune in and listen. Um, you know, oh, by the way, we're also getting ready to release a video uh, that we put together with her on her story and the pet food pantry story. It, it'll make you cry. It'll make you laugh. It, I don't know. I, I, I find it. It's an award winner, okay? So we're, we're going to be in Hollywood next, uh, next year for this little film here. Um, anyway, that little film explains what they do and why they do it. Um, by the way, these folks help thousands of people feed their pets. It's just a cool, amazing story. So... Uh, all right, folks, we've answered your questions. Please answer one of mine. So uh, what would you do to make this show more meaningful to you? Let it rip. Let us know. Give us some feedback. Um, remember, if you like this segment, you know, like us, friend us, share it, let your friends know. We love all that kind of, you know, good stuff. So, again, this is Angel Soriano, a.k.a. Dogman, barking back at you. You asked, be answered. Thank you.